Hello, everyone. This is Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer. I'm with Bill Scott in London, Ontario. We're inside the Diamond Factory. We're inside because it's gusting to 30 knots out there, but we are going to go flying. We're sitting in the DA42NG, which is the follow-on product of the original DA42. This one is equipped with uh, AE300 Austro, Austro engines recently certified. Uh, Bill, tell us a little bit about this airplane before we go flying it. Uh, if we look at the airplane outwardly, it looks very similar, but there are some slight differences. And what are those? Probably the key differences are the cowls, and the cowls are shaped a little bit differently to reflect the new location of the turbocharger, which is up a little bit higher on the right-hand side of the engine. Other than that, the aircraft is very similar to what it was before. Now, those engines are a bit heavier than the Tealert engines were, than the Tealert Centurion 1.7 and 2.0, so there have been some minor, minor structural beef-ups. The landing gear is, has been beefed up a little bit, uh, not significantly, uh, but if you knew what to look for, you'd be able to pick out the beef-up points. And how about the aircraft systems? Uh, same fuel system, uh, brakes and everything else are all the same? Everything's the same. The brakes have been upgraded a little bit, again, with the landing gear, uh, but the systems themselves very similar to what, uh, what we had before. So as I understand it, the airplane is certified both engine and airframe in Europe. That is correct. Uh, we'll be shipping at some point in the future, and there are plans to certify in the U.S. That's the plan. Okay. All right, well, let's take it for a spin, see what it can do. Okay. Pre-flight in the DA-42 is standard stuff, with one exception. You do need a flashlight to check the oil level in the gearbox. That's done through a little sight gauge. What's definitely not standard is the startup procedure. Watch closely, because there's really not much going on here. So hot or cold starts the same way. Same way. The pre-takeoff run-up procedure is fairly simple. Just push the ECU test button and the system automatically does everything else for you. When it's happy, it extinguishes the warning lights. After the run-up, we took off from London and headed out over Lake Erie for some speed trials. With 66 additional horsepower, the NG climbs a little better than the Tealert airplanes do, and you can actually feel a little more buzz in the airframe. You can hear a little bit of it in the audio track. It's not quite as quick to accelerate as the Lycoming L360 version is, but the difference isn't really very noticeable. We step climb through various altitudes, and here's a performance summary. Uh, Bill Scott and I are established uh, in VFR Cruise at 12,000 feet in the 42NG, and we are looking at uh, 165 knots true. That's at a 75% power setting, which is fairly typical, I think you said, of cruise. Of of a normal cruise and 6.6 uh, .6 gallons per side. All the temperatures appear to be in the green. On the uh, climb up to this altitude, we did some uh, step performance checks. At uh, 8,000 feet, uh, we noted at 75% or, uh, power, 6.6 .6 gallons per side and about 158 uh, true airspeed. Uh, again, uh, with the exception of a little bit of high oil temperature, everything is in the green. For a max economy cruise, uh, which we tried at uh, 8,000 feet, 55% power yields uh, 138 knots true at uh, 4.7 gallons per hour. The airplane also showed good manners in a VMC demonstration, and it does as well on one engine as any light twin in its class. One of the best things about the DA-42 and Diamond aircraft in general is superb cockpit visibility. As you can plainly see in our approach back to London, it was a gusty day in Ontario, but Scott greased the NG onto the runway without breaking his sweat. Hold on. Take that, Dan Grider. Here are some final thoughts. From the foregoing video, you can clearly see that the Austro engines do outperform the Tealert engines. The airplane's a little bit faster, and it also clearly climbs better. $64,000 question is, do the new Austro engines solve the Tealert service problems? Well, it's too soon to say that. Uh, Diamond has to get a few hundred of these engines out in the field and see how they perform over the long term. But the numbers so far do add up. I like the fact that these engines cost a little bit more to overhaul than a Lycoming. They should. They're a more sophisticated engine. It's not reasonable to expect them to be as cheap or as light as a Lycoming engine. So going forward in a couple years, we'll know more. For AvWeb and Aviation Consumer, this is Paul Bertarelli reporting. Thanks for watching.
For a detailed report on the GA42NG, see the October 2009 issue of Aviation Consumer at aviationconsumer.com.